go into another number. So let's see, to make 12, I have one times 12. I have two times six. So I'd like to kind of just go in order starting at one. Okay, so the next one will be three. Hmm, three times four, right? Okay, next is four. Well, four times three. Well, we already listed three times four, which is 12, and four times three is 12. These are essentially the same things. So this would be considered our duplicate. And whenever you get a duplicate, you're done. You've listed all the factors. So the factors of 12 are, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in order, one, two, three, four, six, and 12. We're gonna do the same thing for 16 now. To make 16, I'm gonna start at one. One times 16, two times eight. Does three go into 16? No, it does not. How about four? Yep, four times four. Does five go into 16? Nope. Does six go into 16? Nope. Does seven go into 16? Nope. Um, how about eight? Yeah, eight times two, right? But we already have eight times two up here. So again, this is our duplicate, right? So this is my duplicate. And whenever you get to the duplicate, you know you're done. You've listed all your factors. So the factors of 16, I'm gonna go ahead and list them in order. One, two, and if you want, you can cross them out as you list them. So I just did one, I just did two. Um, no three, there's a four. And I don't have to list both fours, I'm just gonna list one of the fours. No five, no six, no seven. There's an eight, and there's a 16, okay? So just go ahead and make sure you've listed them all. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for the greatest, that's what the, st the G stands for, the greatest factors they have in common. They may have several factors in they have in common. So right now I'm just gonna circle whatever they have in common. So let's see, we've got a two, and we've got a four, and that's it. So you can see there's multiple factors they have in common, but we're looking for the biggest factor they have in common. And the biggest factor they have in common is this four. Okay, so the GCF, the greatest common factor between 12 and 16 is four. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the second way. So this is just a very, the, the traditional way. This is second way um, involves prime factorization or a factor tree. So here's the second way. So we're gonna find the prime factors of 24 and 36. A little bit of a bigger number numbers here. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a factor tree of both 24 and 36. Okay, and the factor tree is just what it looks like. It's a tree and it consists of all the factors that make up 24. So 24, I'm gonna go ahead and use two times 12, okay? Two's a prime, so I'm gonna circle a prime. I'm gonna break down six into two and six. And anytime I see a prime number, a number that can divide into only one in itself, I circle it. I'm gonna break down six into two and three. Great. Now I'm gonna do 36. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for 36. I'm gonna use two times 18. Doesn't really matter what you use. You can use six times six. It, it, do, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same answers in the end. Two times nine. And again, I'm circling my prime factors. Oh, I like to use different colors when I circle my prime factors so it stands out. Okay, next I'm gonna list them on top of each other. I'm gonna stack them neatly on top of each other. So the prime factors of 24 are two, and as I list them, I cross them out, times two, times two, times three. Always just double check. So I've got one, two, three twos, one, two, three twos, and one three. Perfect, I got them all. 
Okay, prime factors of 36, I'm gonna list them. 36 consists of two times two times, I'm gonna leave a little space there, three times three. Okay, so I've got two threes, two threes, and two twos, two twos. Always double check, very easy to miss a number and then the whole thing is wrong. So next we're gonna look at any sort of matches we have between the twos, two numbers. So it looks like I have a match of two right here. Looks like I have another match of two right here. And I have another match right here of three. Okay, and it's kind of helpful. See how I left the blank space right there for that extra two? I really wanted to make sure that my matches were on top of each other. So always just try to be mindful that you're gonna be making, your next step is going to be making matches. So just try to list them, leave, leave blank spaces if there's no um, factor there. And so that way your threes are on top of each other. If I had fours, I'd try to list them on top of each other. Just keeping it very nice and neat because it's easy to miss a match. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to look at my matches. So I have one match of two. I have one match of two, again, and I have one match of three. And if I multiply these together, my matches, one match of two, one match of two, one match of three, if I multiply them together, that will give you my GCF. So two times two is four, times three is 12. So the GCF of 24 and 36 is 12. That's it. So I took, I looked at my matches, I took the number from the matches, so I have a match of two, I extracted it down here, I have a match of two, I extracted it down here, I have a match of three, I extracted it down here. Don't worry about anything else, it's not a match. I multiplied them together and it gives you your GCF of 12. And I hope this was helpful for you guys. Talk to you soon.